May the 5th, you'll listen to the sports show about nothing. Got your humble host, Ricky D, in the house, man. My co-host, Boz, ain't here today. We're going to have a great show. You're in tune for a great show today. We're going to do something new today. We're going to talk about NBA, Steph Curry with his 51 points Wednesday night. We're going to get into uh, these picks. Cam. And they say it's Cam against Peyton, but we all know that it's actually Cam versus this Denver defense. And it's Peyton versus this Carolina defense. Keekly, Davis, Norman on one side. You got Miller, Ware, Tlaib, Harris on the other side. It's going to be a great Super Bowl, people. A lot of people think that uh, Panthers are going to blow them out. I don't see it that way. Denver too good. It's not going to be what occurred two years ago when Denver went against Seattle. Uh, they have the experience now. It's going to be totally different. So just wait. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm trying to see where the party's at. I'm trying to get invited to go somewhere and eat. Uh, we're going to see what to look at. <laughs> uh, we're going to play this music right quick, man. We're going to come back and we're going to dive into this. we got a great show for you today. This is the sports show about nothing. We're back. You're not listening to the sports show about nothing. There's your humble host, Ricky D, in the house once again. And uh, we're going to dive into these uh, the predictions. Uh, you have, it's a 60-40. Uh, when you overall do the ratings on the predictions that we are seeing from ESPN, NFL Network, uh, CBS, NBC, ABC, uh, all the media outlets are predicting on the Super Bowl. That it's a 60 40 ordeal where you have the Broncos at 40% chance of winning. You got the Carolina Panthers at 60% chance of winning. Let's dive into some of these matchups. Cam, the key to the game, in my humble opinion, and I'm picking the Panthers, by the way, uh, but I'm not saying that Denver don't have a chance to win. Any given Sunday, anybody can win. Injuries, anything can happen, um, turnovers, penalties. Uh, special teams with the kickers, anything can happen. But the key to the game that I see for the Panthers winning the game is the offensive line. When they get Cam the time, the protection, to drop back and throw the ball, because I think Denver is going to be key in the end on shutting down the run, Jonathan Stewart, which I think Stewart is a good back, but I don't think Stewart is a great back. He plays good with Cam. He's not a Marshawn Lynch that Russell Wilson has. Uh, so we're we going to see. He's not DeMarco Murray, Murray that the Cowboys have. So we're we going to see if that running game, Denver can stop the running game. And I think they can. So I think the matchup is going to be Khalil, the center, uh, Michael Orr on the end against either Von Miller or Ware because I'm quite sure they're going to rotate those guys out left and right. So that's going to be the key matchup for me. And uh, we're going to see how that works with that. Uh, if, if I had to, like I said, I'm picking Carolina, so if I just had to just see who's going to win the matchup, uh, I say Von Miller and DeMarcus Ware is going to get their share of plays. But I think overall, Cam versatility is just, he's going to dominate the field. I, I can see him running easily for 100 yards. Because uh, once, once, once the line breaks down, you know, you, he's not going to be able to hold the containment. So. We're going to see. Uh, you also have the receivers, and I give that, that's a strength I give to the Broncos' defense because I think they have the best secondary, and I think they're able to shut Philly Brown down and uh, German Cotteridge from Birmingham, uh, Jericho Cotteridge from Birmingham. Uh, you have uh, Fetches. I think he's... The secondary for Denver is going to shut that down. Uh, Olsen is another key, but that's a positive for Carolina. Because I see Olsen go on for 80 yards. I don't see him cracking 100 because they're going to be keying him all day. You got the Brandon Marshall, not the uh, New York Jets Brandon Marshall, but the Brandon Marshall of the Broncos, which is a pretty good man linebacker. Pretty good at covering the tight end and covering the running backs out the backfield. That's going to be good to go. We're going to see how that the matchup works out. And uh, of all things, I think Cam will get a lot of offside penalties because his cadence is on point. Uh, he fooled a lot of people with his cadences. 
He look at back through even when he first came in the league five years ago. He's good at getting guys jumping off sides. I don't know where he perfected that at because I didn't see that at Auburn. Uh, maybe because Auburn didn't give him opportunity to do that. But he's pretty good on that. I, I guess Mike Shule didn't help bring that out of him because Shule was a pretty decent college quarterback. And he's been a pretty good, decent offensive coordinator also. I don't know if that's Cam or that's Shula. But also to match up with him, design those plays against um, the defensive coordinator and Phillips, Wade Phillips. So that's a matchup nobody's talking about. Mike Shula going against Wade Phillips' defense. I think that's going to be a key matchup that we're going to have to see also. Because you're going to have to put Cam in the play in the position to make those plays. And we're going to see if uh, Phillips going to be able to put – Miller and uh, Ware in position to make those plays because I don't think you can just rush on every play because they're going to get wore out by the fourth quarter. So some of them guys are going to have to drop back in coverage, and we're going to have to see. What's up, Swole? What's up? What's going on, man? I'm good. I'm sorry to barge in. What we got going on? Go Panthers. <laughs> just this Sunday, that's it. Just this Sunday? That's all I'm I'm just rooting for them this Sunday. That's it. That's it. That's it. Can't be a bandwagon, man. I'm an Eagles fan. I'm just rooting for the Panthers on Sunday. That's in, it. In a particular reason why? I like Cam. That's what it is. Yeah. I'm not an Auburn fan. Don't get that twisted. I do like Cam, though, because, you know, he, he's just a good dude, man. Like, what he does, giving people, you know, game balls and giving them the kids and everything and talking to the kids before games, that's, I mean, that's nice. And people are complaining about that. About how you get a ball's way to the kids. Y'all need to grow up and get lives then. I'm so serious. Yeah. You got a couple females uh, that's been talking about that. The lady in Nashville. You heard about that one? I heard. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We're talking about the key matches up for the game, though, man. Olsen. Olsen is against. Uh, I don't see him breaking. 100 yards this game. I don't either. I think it's Olsen versus, is it Trevathan? Is it either yeah. Trevathan or Brandon Marshall? Mm. The other Brandon yeah, Marshall. Yeah, the other Brandon Marshall. I'm, I'm going, the biggest matchup in the game is going to be, uh, I, Jonathan Stewart got to get something going. That's a big thing. That's huge. I think, and I just said, I think the biggest matchup of the game is Wade Phillips versus Mike Schultz. <laughs> The play calling. Yeah, absolutely. How the play calling goes going to determine a lot of things. I don't think it's going to be that different than uh, than it usually is. I think it's just going to be kind of, you know. I think because the, the Panthers are such a balanced team mm -hmm. that Denver's strength is the defense and the secondary. They got the best secondary in the league. Yeah. But how many times Cam going to throw the ball? He know that. Cam's not going to throw more than 40 times to I don't no, no, no. If he had to throw 40 times, that means they're going to lose because yeah. they, they fighting from behind. I don't see him throwing more than 25 times. This, uh, and I hate, it's. I know it's extremely difficult to predict this or anything. Does anybody get hurt? I, 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 I will say this, what scares me is the fact that Thomas Davis is playing. I don't think he's going to play the whole game. Though. He broke his arm. I mean, you actually get, uh, Allen also hurt, uh, Jared Allen is also hurt. Yeah. I don't think he's going to play. Yeah, he's playing. Are you serious? Yes. Wow. So you got one guy with a broken arm, one guy with a broken foot. And they playing. A veteran. Got to play. So, I shall be back. The Panthers. I think they get out to a fast start, man. Uh, history has shown that this year in particular that uh, they the fastest team in the NFL to get out to starts. Uh, they get big leads and have you trying to play catch up, and their defense just just pin their ears back and just attack. Uh, Keekley and Davis are probably the best two uh, inside linebackers in the game. Uh, Thomas Davis, man, is is, is a great player. Uh, he's he's finally starting to get his recognition. Um, unfortunately, he broke his arm, so he's not going to be at full strength. But I think he still is going to be dominant on the field for the times he get in and play a couple. Uh, have a couple possessions that he's going to be able to play in. I mean, Kikulich is a beast. He's the only guy in NFL history, and I repeat that, NFL history to have back-to-back -back games in the playoffs where he had an interception for a touchdown. That's never had happened before. Never. Um, so that defense, man, and then along with that, I want to say that four of the guys in the secondary have had 
uh, interception return for touchdowns this year. I know Norman has Keekley Davis um, and Michael, who came from the, uh, the Eagles, has. So it's, it's it's a stingy defense, especially in the secondary. It's a very stingy defense, so it's going to be very tough to see Denver passing game or even running game for that matter, that matter be able to just put up yards on this defense. Uh, I don't think Denver can score more than 21 points, honestly, so they're going to have to keep it close. Even if they just pound the ball and don't get yards, but just get those, keep the possessions and keep the, the chains moving. They're going to have to find a way to do that. But they, they do have a shot. Like I said, I'm picking uh, the Panthers. But the key matchup for Denver, man, is offensively is get the ball out of Peyton hand very quickly. Because if you hold on to that ball, Mario Addison, uh, Jared Allen, Ely, Short, those guys are coming. I mean, because Carson Palmer this year in particular played better than Manning, and they was in the backfield with him just about every play. Uh, and I, you can argue that the Panthers uh, match up with uh, Denver pretty well offensively against defense, but I think that it match up very well for the simple fact that Denver don't even have a running game. I mean, you, I can't even name the running backs. <laughs> I mean, I know who they are, but who are they? Uh, they, don't, they haven't had a thousand yard rushing years. And uh, Tom has been inconsistent with dropping balls. Um, Sanders already coming out talking trash to Josh uh, Norman. They got into it yesterday. He was saying Norman is all hype. Sanders was saying that uh, when well, Sanders was saying that Norman is all hype, and Norman kind of talked back and was saying like, well. Sanders is uh, is a person who is uh, built up on what Peyton Manning has done because that's the reason why Pittsburgh let him go. But I don't think that's true. Uh, I don't think that's true at all. I think that uh, Sanders is a good player. And I think it would be a good matchup, but I don't think that those two players are going to match up because I think the marriage Thomas, I think you're going to have Norman on Thomas. So we're going to see. You see how Thomas, man, been getting all these drops lately, the last couple games? The Marys? Yes. Yes, I have. And I don't know if that's something to worry about, but, you know. Because, I mean, the Marys has consistently been one of the top like, 10, ten. You know, wide receivers in the NFL. But I wonder if that has anything to do with who's throwing him the ball. Yeah, because – but he was pretty good when Tebow was there also. Yeah, he was. I don't know. He's okay. He, he's okay. He, he's an okay receiver. I don't. He might not even be top five, top ten this year. Honestly. Can you name his be receivers better than Demarius Thomas? Can you ten receivers better than Demarius Thomas? Yeah. Let's go on and get the obvious ones out the way. Julio, Antonio Brown. Julio, Antonio Brown. You have Hopkins of Texas. Yeah. You have T.J. Um, T.Y. Hill of uh, A.J. Green. You have – so I had to go by teams because I look at the teams and then that's how I can add each receiver. Got you. Um, Brandon Marshall. Yeah. Megatron. Yeah. Uh, what's the guy that left um, Seattle uh, with Megatron now? Golden Tate. Golden Tate. Mm, yes. No. Yes, the last two years he's been better than Thomas. Uh, what about – This that show that. Uh, I, I, you could say Allen Robinson from Jacksonville. Yeah, I, I, I heard. Hmm. <laughs> Her too. Hearns? No. Hearns been playing good, man. He's not better than Demarius Thomas. His stats this year said he was. I don't know. So you can't go on the stats, huh? I need to get your opinion about something, Ricky D. That was nine players right there. Oh, wow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And I didn't even mention Amari Cooper. Oh, yeah. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, Demarius is, is wow. he, he just fell off a lot, man. I don't think it's that he fell off. I think he said Emmanuel Sanders just stepped up. Emmanuel Sanders is maybe the best receiver on that team. He the best. Emmanuel Sanders is arguably the best slot receiver in the game right now. He really is. Slot. Receiver. I thought he was number two receiver though. But he played from the slot. Okay. He's a two receiver. When he played from the slot. I understand that. That makes sense. Okay. Cool. I don't know. Like, who's your MVP of the Super Bowl? Then that's the question I have. MVP of the Super Bowl. Huh. If I just had to name somebody off the bat, I gotta go with Cam. Um, but if it's not Cam, 
if it's not Cam who's MVP, then I most definitely got to go with Norman or Keith Lee. I got to go with defense. If it's not Cam with Car- if Car- I'm picking Carolina to win. Mm-hmm. If it's somebody from Carolina, the three players I'm picking is Cam, Keith Lee, Norman. But, you know, it's always going to be somebody unexpectedly who may – Yeah, there's always play. somebody. Last year it was Malcolm Butler. The year before it was Malcolm Smith it was for the Bu- Seahawks. It was Butler, and if Seattle would have won, it would have been Matthews, the guy who was working in Foot Locker, the receiver. Yeah. He had over 100 and some yards, 100-plus mm-hmm. yards. Boy, Came out of nowhere. Now. Where we at? Hey. At home. No, he ain't at home. <laughs> what is he? He's like David Tyree. Yeah, exactly. So – uh, I don't know if I if I had to pick somebody who's just like if I'm picking somebody that's not you know, I guess a big pick or whatever. I'm I'm picking probably Shaq Thompson. Hmm. Shaq Thompson to Philly Brown. <laughs> now I I'll pick those guys that for us making big plays. Yeah, but I mean it, it always ball. happens in a big game, man. Yeah, yeah. Like somebody we saw. Unexpected. The, I mean it, it happens in any football game. Like there's always somebody ex- unexpected when it's a big game. Like for Step the up. national championship, we saw it was OJ Howard mm-hmm. for Alabama for Clemson. It was uh what was his name Renfro. Yeah. Hunter Renfro. Yeah. I mean somebody you never think steps up steps up. Yeah, I I totally agree. And 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 for as on Denver end. Who I think got a chance to win the MVP? I gotta go all defense, cause I don't see offensive players making a difference. I see defense having to put up all the scores for them. If an offensive player, uh, if if it is an offensive player that wins MVP, no, it's gonna, no, be, it's gonna be, it to be CJ him. Anderson. They gonna give it to Payton. They gonna give it to Payton, like they gave it to Tom last year. Yeah, they, they gave, gave it to Tom. Tom. Yeah, Tom wasn't even. I mean, Tom had a good game or anything. What's his name? Was the MVP for real? Come on, Malcolm Butler. And you know you don't want to get MVPs to one play, but that one play was determined the game. That won them the game, yeah. yeah. So I mean, it was the most valuable play yeah. made by the player. So it's got to be most, yeah. It, it's yeah, it's definitely it's gonna be legit this year. Right, I'm excited. To, we about to pay some bills right now, man. Uh, <laughs> Chris, you got a kick. C C Mosley. C C Mosley. R E A I G. R E I A G. R E R E A I G. R E. Y'all gotta go follow my boy Chris, man. Follow at C C Mosley M O S L E Y R E A I G. That's on IG. Bro, what you eating on? And you gotta hit him up on YouTube. Moon, Check man. out some of the videos, man. He got some dope videos on YouTube. Man. Search for the same thing, Chris. Search for the same thing, man. Yep. Chris, you got a Bebo on MySpace? No. Hi again. Man, I'm about dealing with no MySpace, man. <laughs> what are you talking about 30 years ago, man? My, whoa, whoa, MySpace, whoa, come on. Whoa. What's about MySpace, bro? You don't have a MySpace? Bro, I don't even think I ever got into MySpace. Seriously. I, I have, have a MySpace. Man, ain't no Follow me on MySpace, man. At We Try. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Come on, man. Check us out, Sports Show. I also got a Bebo, by the way. Are you serious? You know, what's wrong with Bebo? Okay. Bebo, Kick, uh, what else do I do? Uh, add me on LinkedIn, you know. I think that's about it. Check me out on LinkedIn, Ricky D, 83. Yeah. Check me <laughs> out on IG, Ricky D, 83. I got some dope sneakers coming out, too, this weekend, man. I got some clean ones. You're going to like them. All red Valentine's Day, I'll get prepared. Man, let's not talk about Valentine's Day, bro. I don't celebrate <laughs> I will uh, celebrate Valentine's Day. I will be going to Hooters. Solo. Bringing my ex's picture. Are you serious? And getting Please my tell 10 me. free wings. I know you stand over <laughs> I know you stand over man. Come on. Are you serious? Yo, 100 free wings ain't bad. I got like 10 pictures. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So you bring your pictures? If you bring a picture of your ex, you with you wings. and your ex, they're going to shred the picture. You get 10 free wings. Wow. Ten free boneless wings, bro. Wow. I don't know about you, man. I'm going to be eating a lot of chicken that day. Hooters are really trying to get customers, huh? I don't understand why they do. Oh, wait. It's next Sunday. I thought Valentine's Day yeah, was yeah, like, I okay. mean, it's Super Bowl Sunday. I mean, for all the guys, man, if, if, if it was Valentine's Day this weekend, Yo, ladies ten, would be upset unless it was tomorrow. Ten if it was on Sunday, out of luck, nobody's moving yeah, from the television I can, tomorrow. Yeah, you can hear the arguments already. Yeah, exactly. Well, we're not going to move in front of the TV for the All-Star game either, though. Nah, I move for the All-Star game. <laughs> really? A, I mean, who, who takes the All-Star game seriously? I kind of do. Not seriously, but I like it. I mean, I can actually T-Bow the uh, All-Star game and go back and watch it. The Saturday night is more fun than the All-Star game, honestly. Like, yeah, gonna I agree. Play. I agree. Friday is fun, too. ESPN, like, I mean, NBA does the All-Star weekend, like, the best. No question. Yeah. 
Better than the Pro Bowl. Better than uh. They they had the best game for. Um, they they had the best All Star game. The, the actual All Star game. Yeah. <laughs> like I mean the whole process of it too is is better than NFLs because I mean nobody watches the Pro Bowl. Anymore. No, no. It should and, be just flag football, honestly. And the All Star game, the MLB does All Star game better than NFL does the Pro Bowl. And the only reason why is because people actually kind of play hard in the All Star game in uh, baseball. And the reason why is because there's actually stakes. Yeah, because you, you win a uh, home field advantage for your, in a, your uh, Yeah, in the World Series. Yeah. So that's important. The home run derby used to kind of is born now. Because everybody McGuire took steroids. Totally oh, yeah. When Josh Hamilton did it, man. Josh Hamilton hit like 30 in a round yeah. once. And Maybe, still lost. Man, we can't, you can't mention Josh, man. You how he did his wife, man. No, I honestly don't. What happened? He just popped up and didn't even tell her that he was divorcing her. Are you serious? I'm so serious. She had to find out, like, from somebody else. Wow. It's, and she's been there through thick and thin with him because, you know, now I don't know what's going on, you know, behind closed doors. But yeah, Josh has been on a lot of drugs. Josh is. I mean, he owned up to that. I mean, but he's been down through that. And mm-hmm. for her to stick with him, you know. Do that. Wow, that is yeah. like, come on, dude. Like even even you gotta let dude, her know. Exactly, exactly. But I mean, hey, that's speaking how of closed doors, man, it's it's I, I hate you know a, pe- a huge pet peeve of mine is when I see potential, and like it goes to waste. Johnny, Johnny Manziel, over. Like there's no way anybody picks him up. I ain't gonna say I'm glad that it's it's, it's over. I'm just tired of hearing the talk about Johnny. So I'm glad that the talk about Johnny is finna die. Down. I hate it because, like, I mean, he was actually doing somewhat decent in, you know, he was actually Don't say doing. he was decent. No, I mean, he wasn't bad for Cleveland Man, this year. come on. I mean, I'm not saying they won games or anything. I'm just saying, you know, you played, he was their best quarterback. You played the game to win. But, That's I it. mean. Bottom line. I don't care what you're doing. What what I honestly hope is like somebody comes out and says you know, with this whole Johnny Manziel for those who, so for those who don't know, um, Manziel we has like some I guess the word would be disturbing, mm-hmm. you know. They say it's alcohol, but clearly yeah. it's more than alcohol. It's you. drugs, yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. That there, there are reports going around that Johnny beat his ex girlfriend. I heard that. And, and this is multiple times also. Drug her with, drug her hair, drug her by her hair. And he's a little dude too, man. Yeah. And <laughs> I've heard. And another thing is, uh, they say he threatened to kill both of them. You know, that he said, he got some "Shut up, issues. or I uh, will kill both of us." Yeah, that that's that's mental issues right there. Yeah, seriously. Like and he and we're also hearing reports that he, you know, turned down rehab twice this week. Yeah, that ain't looking good. Yeah, man. That ain't looking good. <laughs> but I'm looking good. All with right. the Panther blue on, with the black and red. Sports show about that, baby. Sports show about that, baby. Before we get out of here, man. Homage to Wale. Something that I um, that's very dear to my heart is the Hall of Fame. Because um, it's, it's so many guys I grew up watching yeah. that I admire that I, one day, I, as a little kid, I'm like, I don't be like this guy. I'll, you know. Uh, one of my, my favorite quarterback all time, Dan Marino, mm. and Joe Montana. I'm like 50 50. But favorite player of all time? Yeah. T.O. T.O. And I think he is a Don't first they vote? ballot Hall of Famer. In this, the vote, like. It's tomorrow. This, it's tomorrow, right? It's tomorrow. Who do you think, um, who are the finalists? Can we look that up real quick? The finalists. I know it's Farb. I know it's T.O. Because uh, we're actually waiting on, you know. The Students' Choice Mix, which is coming up soon, ladies and gentlemen, for those who are listening. <laughs> what? I'm trying to think. Pro Football Hall of Fame. Who are the finalists I know? I remember last year when uh, Seau made it. They said in the room that it only took them like seven minutes to deliberate on that. I mean, honestly, it's, it's, what is the debate on T.O.? T.O. is one of the greatest. But the thing about he about five ever. Yeah, T.O. should be in. Is he first, first ballot? Yes. First ballot. Why okay. not? What? Tell me why not. I just I, I can't say no. I'm saying I want to see the other. You know. I mean, you got Farr. You got you got Brett Farr. Brett Farr should absolutely be. What is going on? Why is it moving so slow here? 
What's going on? I put Brett Favre over T.O. Honestly, right now. I mean, and the reason no, why? No, no. I would. No. You want to know why? What is What does Brett Favre have that T.O. don't have? Listen. Okay, he got a ring. <laughs> but this This is what I'm saying. This is This is all I'm saying. At his position, it's more guys. It's more quarterbacks that's better than Brett Favre than it is wide receivers better than T.O. Believe me when I say T.O. is a top five receiver. Brett Favre is a top ten quarterback. That's a, total, mm, that's, that's that's a good point. That is a and really that's what good I'm point. saying. It's different. When you when you talk about wide receivers of all time, you, you can't mention uh you can't the history of the NFL cannot be mentioned without Ter- Terrell Owens. Okay. You, can, you can mention Jerry Rice, you can mention Randy Moss, top two ever. After that, you gotta throw in Moss. I mean you gotta throw in T O. You can mention top guys quarterbacks. Well no, not and I'm a Raider fan, so you can't I ain't gonna lie, Tim Brown is not top five. Tim Brown is top ten of all time, but he's not a top five wide right receiver. Not all the time. He didn't change the game. He made a big difference in the game during his yeah. period. But if us just dominating and changing the game, no, no, he didn't do that. Favre, you can arguably say Favre changed the game, but like I said, when it comes to quarterbacks, I mean, yeah. But who are the who are the finalists? You got Ezra James, which I I feel like he's a Hall of Famer. Not first ballot to me, but uh yeah, you can you can say it's not first ballot because he out of eleven years he had about a good six or seven years where he was just dominant. After yeah. that, he kind of fell off. But that's most running backs. Yeah, he kind of he he was good way before I started watching football. You got <laughs> you got Steve Atwater, you got Kirk Warner. More than Anderson should be first ballot. More than Anderson. Oh, yeah, kicker. Yo, but when you got the most points in NFL history, you yeah, mean to tell me? count for something. Yeah, that got to count for something. Yeah, Orlando Pace. Orlando Pace arguably should be a first round. Yeah, Orlando first Pace was legit. Dominant. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. You got Terrell Davis. How long he been on the back? He should have been in there, though. TD should have been in there. Dungy. Wasn't Dungy? Dungy I, is questionable. If though. I'm not mistaken, Dungy is the first black coach to win a Super Bowl. No. He's the only coach. Only black coach win a Super Bowl. Which really? Was <laughs> wow. Head coach, yes. Well, no, I'm, I'm, well, I'm tripping. No, Tumlin. I'm sorry. Tumlin the second. Tumlin, Dungy yeah. one, Tumlin two, yeah. That's what to say. But, I mean, you I got John Lynch, Lynch, which is John Lynch is, was, a, was a good full, I mean, a good free safety, but he is not a first battle Hall of Fame at all by any stretch, which I think his first, he came up for election last year, so this is not his first year. Okay. But he still should be knocked down because, I mean, he was just a dominant safety. He was so, just scared to go across the middle. So the question it. I have is how many people can can be in this year? It's only seven. Only it's five, seven? Five active, and you have um, two that are like, uh, what's the word? Legendary or something? Yeah, that's older. And Ken Stabler going to get that. Mm-mm. Ken Stabler didn't have a good enough NFL career. Are you? What? I'm just kidding. Why did he put the Raiders on the map, I'm man? kidding. He was, he was back then when John Madden was. Come on, now. I'm kidding. But I think you're going you to put. Go. You got to put, to me, you got to put Coriel in there, and you got to. I feel like a, a personal, I feel some type of way about this. You got to put Kurt Warner in there. Kurt you Warner, have why? To. Why? Not, not simply for the fact because he's just, and you'll probably be like, but that's not what the Hall of Fame is for. I'm not saying. Was he with bagging groceries? Yes, exactly. Kurt Warner is the greatest underdog story in history of NFL football. He is. There is no way you can go from. Uh, you mean to tell me. Bagging groceries to. To NFL MVP. MVP. Yeah. And the Super Bowl winner. Well, I, I remember you had uh, Lewis down in uh, New Orleans who ran, uh, who used to run kickoffs and punt return work special teams. He used to drive Bill Trucks boat wise. Still, he, man. He, but you're right. He you was went, a, 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 that dude you know. went from, <laughs> uh, he went from paper or plastic to but he, okay, NFL okay. MVP. And you know what? I, I do deserve, I think he deserved to be in the Hall of Fame. And he's not a first battle Hall of Fame. Because clearly he's, he came up last year and they passed him up. But Kurt was so inconsistent. He had a good starting off three to four years. He was dominant. But that's when he had the greatest show on turf. Then he hit a long. Hey, man, let's, let's not act like he, he didn't contribute. every time. Let's not act like he didn't contribute to Torrey Holt and Isaac Bruce's success. Well, to- he did. well, Ozzie Bruce was already a dominant receiver before he even got there. That's true. I'm not saying the that. The Reverend. I'm which saying. He's up for the Hall of Fame also this year. Ozzie Bruce? Yes. He should be. Yes. He absolutely should. He should be, be in there. And the question was because it's three up. You got T.O., Marvin Harrison, and uh, Ozzie Bruce. So. 
T. Mean, Olin better than both all three. If you had to take out the three, who would you pick? Say it one more time. Isaac Bruce, T. O. Marvin Harrison. Shocker! You want to, uh, don't say Marvin Harrison. That's an argument for the simple fact that you got Rachel Wayne. I already know you're gonna say that because you said shocker. I said hey. hey. For the simple fact that Marvin Harrison, you can say Peyton Manning made him or he made Peyton Manning, but you had Rich Wayne on the other side, man. Who you can argue? But the thing about it is, it's like also. it's no question that he Peyton Manning. I don't. I don't want to say Peyton Manning made him, but yo, Peyton Manning pretty much made every wide receiver he's played. You, we saw how good he made. Well, let's see. We saw how good he made Eric Decker look. He's making Demarius Thomas look legit. Yeah, that's true. You remember what he had? Well, who were the dudes he had? I feel like if you like a wide receiver and a quarterback makes you look good, you owe them like a a check, <laughs> like percentage of the check. Yeah. James Jones still owes Aaron Rodgers some. Uh, Wes Welker still owes Tom Brady. And uh, to me. To me, what's my man's name in Washington? Pierre Garçon owes oh, Peyton Manning. Yeah, Pierre he got Garçon, him paid in Washington. Yeah, he got him paid. In Washington, yeah. Well, man, it's been fun. It's been real fun, man. Thanks for having me. Man, Super Bowl Sunday, man. Like I said, T.O. going to the Hall of Fame. Shout out T.O., man. Um, Alexander City, representing the Alexander City, Alabama. Alabama. Chattanooga. So we hope you get in, man. Uh, it's been a great show. Like I said, you listen to the sports show about nothing. See you next week. See ya. Panthers, before I get out of here, 23 to 20. What did I say, 24-13? 23-20 Panthers. Okay. We'll see. MVP Cam Newton. <laughs> All right, man. We out.